Hello, tonight on Business Live, the economy goes by 0.4% in 2021, according to latest stats from the Ghana Statistical Service. Ahead, government is being urged to put in more effort to diversify the economy for inclusive growth. We hear from economist Peter Korte. There's no economy, no market economy where when, when you grow, everybody gets a fair share of the national kick. There has to be conscious effort to redistribute the growth. Also coming up, German Corporation and Ministry of Trade and Industry enter new agreements to develop industrial parks here in Ghana. And tonight on the Joy Business Van, the online platform making it easy to shop for building materials online will be at NYC Mall. Thanks for being with us. My name is Daryl Kwao. Details right after this break. First up tonight, uh, economist Professor Peter Corte is asking government to put in more effort to add value to uh, major export commodities as the agri-sector contributed significantly to the 0.4% GDP growth rate in 2020. Now, take a listen to government statistician Professor Samuel Kobne Nim, who announced the latest figures earlier today. National current annual GDP estimates from an oil point of view stood at 404,873.7 million Ghana cities. This compares with 350,788.2 million Ghana cities that was recorded in the year 2019, indicating about 53,000 million Ghana cities increase between 2019 and 2020. From a current point of view, again excluding oil, we saw that in 2020, GDP stood at 353,705.1 million Ghana cities, and this compared with 315,118.8 million Ghana cities that was recorded in the annual year 2019, indicating an increase in excess of 35 million. From a sector point of view, again on an annual GDP, we continue to see the services sector driving or having the highest contribution, contribution contribution to the overall GDP by contributing 44.6%, followed by industry sector 36.3% and agriculture 19.1%. From a basic prices point of view on an annual basis, GDP stood at 386,880.5 million Ghana cities. And from a purchases value point of view, GDP stood at 404,873.7 million Ghana cities. The GDP growth rate of 0.4% uh, in 2020 beat slightly uh, forecast by institutions and analysts. The expectations were that the economy will grow at a rate of at least 1% of GDP last year. Now, early on the marketplace, economist Peter Corte said there's a need to diversify the economy in order for the figures to translate into job creation. Surprise, because it's the oil sector that grow this. Uh, growth rate. If you look at oil prices on the international market, I think demand hasn't picked up as much as possible and therefore price of oil hasn't uh, really picked up. So that significantly affected the uh, mining and firing sector growth rates and, and that, that is what we are seeing. It has had a dampening effect on the growth of agri and the other sectors that, that, that are driving the growth process. And if you look at the numbers we are seeing, it tells you that we need to diversify our economy. We could not rely solely on one or two sectors. Uh, we've seen what oil has done as a result of COVID, as a result of global demand shifts. 
Therefore, we need to certainly diversify our products. And the other thing we have to do is to add value. We ought to process more of whatever we produce. And that will significantly help in the job creation we, we are talking about. If we process and add more value, then we can pay more people, we can employ more people, and that, that will ensure that the growth uh, is distributed. But let's also be, be ma a reminded or minded that there's no economy, no market economy where when, when you grow, everybody gets a fair share of the national cake. There has to be conscious effort to redistribute the growth. And, and that is why uh, policies like the LEAP and, and uh, um, many other government interventions are necessary to ensure that growth is redistributed. And we've got some more uh, economic projections for you. Ghana will experience buoyant economic growth in the second half of this year uh, due to increased aggregate demand and uptick in private consumption. This will upset the relatively slow economic growth anticipated during the first half of this year. Now, according to Fitch Solutions, that is the research arm of ratings agency Fitch, Ghana's economy will grow at 4.6% gross domestic product growth rate, same as the International Monetary Fund forecast as investments will rise. Let's listen to William Atwell, who is the senior country risk analyst at Fish Solutions Sub-Saharan Africa team. It is outperforming other West African markets in terms of the vaccine rollout. It is still actually very slow and small scale. And thus we expect some social distancing measures to remain in place in the coming months, which will of course weigh on confidence and, and business activity, certainly in the first half of the year. You can see uh, on the chart on the right-hand side how confidence levels dipped somewhat in February amid a rise in COVID restrictions and a consequent tightening, uh, uh, a rise in COVID cases and a consequent tightening of restrictions. Nevertheless, growth will improve considerably following last year's slump, and we expect it to be driven mainly by an uptick in private consumption as labour market conditions improve and inflation moderates somewhat. Net exports will also perform well as global demand for commodities such as cocoa and, and, oils ri uh, and oil rises. President Kufado has released a list of uh, Deputy Finance Minister nominees with Charles Edubwain, a former Deputy Finance Minister, elevated to the position of Minister of State at the Finance Ministry. Earlier reports had stated that the decision to make the chemical engineer turned investment banker a Minister of State uh, was strategic to assist the country's fight to rebuild the economy after the impact of COVID-19. And so you see on your screen um, a list of other uh, nominees, uh, Deputy Ministers of Finance, uh, Abnor Sarasari there, and John Kuma also there. When it comes to the Ministry of Trade and Industry, the nominees for a Deputy Ministerial position, Nana Dukia Isiyama J. Michael Ochibefi and Herbert Krapper. Energy, we've got Mohamed Amin Adam, William Oreku Edu, Andrew Ejapa Mesa, and the list goes on. And on appointments to public institutions, Executive Director of the Africa Center for Energy Policy, Ben Wachi, says decisions should not be based on partisan politics, but competence. He says it is time governments see public agencies as businesses and allow appointees to function without persistent interference. He spoke to my colleague in Shirado. I think the bottom line is the politics, you know, because uh, <coughs> politicians appoint and they are supposed to disappoint okay so if somebody is not delivering and you can clearly show that the technical person is not delivering you just need to bring in somebody else who can actually deliver mm. but because of the persistent interference in the way these institutions function and work they are not even able to call the shots when they have to all right because it is about you know going in there for one procurement or the other and that also gives these uh, civil servants and engineers uh, the room to also uh, uh, underperform because ultimately you cannot hold them accountable uh, for how they function. So we have, you know, curtailed the accountability structure such so that, you know, the appointee cannot hold the appointed uh, accountable. So it's, 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 it's a problem with the politics. We need to see these sector agencies 
uh, running as businesses. If you cannot have ECG running as a business, you cannot have VRA running as a business, you cannot have Rico running as a business, uh, we can't fix these problems. Of course, for the consumer, all you care is that there is power uh, in your home or your business, right? So um, until we are able to separate uh, the politics uh, from the functioning, the proper functioning of these institutions, we're not going to be able to deliver that. So we need to really have a conversation about how do we separate the politics uh, from business to allow them to run as such. Um, is talking up a lot about industrialization. Uh, doesn't that create some sort of an oxymoronic um, situation where on one hand we have aspirations of being industrialized and on the other hand we're not putting in what it takes to ensure that we're able to do that? Yeah, I mean, it's, 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 a, it's, it's a complex, you know, situation. Uh, the language doesn't fit the reality, right? If you want to industrialize, you first of all have to really global space. What you want to produce in Ghana is being produced in China, in Togo, in Europe, uh, in Cote d'Ivoire, everywhere in the world. You are at competition with those uh, uh, people. And therefore, your strategy and your cost competitiveness uh, should, 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 should be paramount in deciding the, the, you know, the trajectory you want to go. In other news, the German Corporation and the Ministry of Trade and Industry have entered into a new agreement to develop some industrial parks in the country. The move also seeks to support the growing automobile industry to meet international standards. Here's a report, our report after a short ceremony to sign the agreement. Corporation says it is committed to supporting Ghana's 10-point industrial transformation agenda with an investment of 540,000 euros through a grant to support industrial park development and to establish an automotive desk at the Ministry of Trade and Industry. The corporation will contribute to the development of selected industrial zones and parks in collaboration with local and international parks developers. Head of Program Special Initiative on Training and Job Creation at GIZ Ghana, Gerard Guskowski said the gesture is expected to boost private and public sector quest to transform the country's economy. Yes, in general we believe that the uh, backbone of the economy and the development of countries is uh, the private sector. No? So uh, of course we need governments to uh, ensure regulations in place that are favorable. But um, the development of a country, the development of jobs, uh, job creation, uh, private sector is, uh, is the backbone and we see that Ghana is uh, putting a big emphasis on this um, with rules and regulations engaging strongly in the African continental free trade area and therefore we are, we are supporting Ghana and uh, trying to develop our partnership. We want uh, matching between uh, um, European companies and Ghanaian companies so we have also pro programs uh, in this uh, direction. Trade and Industry Minister Alan Shermantin expressed confidence that the cooperation between the two parties will transform the automotive industry and attract more German investors to the Industrial Park Initiative. But Industrial Parks would also help provide access to dedicated service lands which would have access to energy water and other infrastructure facilities which supports industrialization so these two components of the special initiative will be absolutely critical in helping us to achieve and realize the objectives of industrial transformation agenda so i hope that this will only be the beginning the other components of the transformation program which I'm very sure um, Germany can help Ghana with. The grant agreement was signed by the country director of GIZ Ghana and Patrick Yaonimo of the Ministry of Trade and Industry. You're watching Business Live. We are taking a short break. When we come back, we'll be bringing you this week's episode of the Joy Business Van, an online platform where you can shop for all your building materials. NYC Mall is a feature. Don't go anywhere.
And welcome back from that break. Now, supply of building materials is one of the tedious aspects of construction projects. If you've tried building, I'm pretty sure you have a story of your own. But just imagine an online platform where you can shop for the materials you need and have them delivered to you. That's the innovation of the NYC Mall. The Joy Business Van today meets the team running Ghana's first online platform for construction materials. Ghana is facing a housing deficit of more than 2 million units. Getting more people to build means making access to construction materials easy. That brings us to New York. Nope, not the popular US city. The New York Junction at Oyarifa, a suburb of Accra, where NYC is located. Kujo Bing is general manager in charge of e-commerce for the firm we started barely a year ago. Uh, we all know the challenges when you're putting up uh, our dream homes, getting materials, uh, dealing with uh, artisans and all that. So we decided to come in as a company to bridge that gap, to help our consumers uh, to have the convenience of walking into a one-stop shop to shop for all their building materials at a go and complete their dream house. The NYC Mall started its offline business in August 2020, at the time the world was grappling with the COVID-19 pandemic. The pandemic and its associated lockdowns became a boost for e-commerce business. E-commerce is, is a growing thing in the country and if anything, if anything that COVID uh, brought us as a blessing is e-commerce. Uh, we've all come to know that you can sit in your house and shop. Nobody knows when the next pandemic is going to come and we'll be locked in our, in, our, in our houses more than three months. You should still be able to continue your projects. That was in part the reason NYC Mall decided to build its online platform, nyconstructionmall.com, after seven months of operations, showcasing almost everything you need for a construction project from cement to steel, electrical and plumbing materials, paints and power tools is generated interest. I'm close to 10,000 people visiting my site and they keep coming. So it tells you it's, 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 it's an avenue that people are happy recreating because uh, this numbers is huge. So the numbers, the engagement has been fantastic and uh, we hope to grow the business. So as, as, as a company, my target is to have close to 200,000 vis people visiting my site by the end of the year. And that is what we are, we are working towards. And the numbers that we are pulling in daily, we'll be able to get there. But it's not just about the numbers for NYC Mall, it's also about ensuring they're delivering quality materials to clients. That means getting the best suppliers in the business at an affordable cost. We do the deliveries worldwide, so there's no problem with that. With increased visits to its online platform, NYC Mall knows it must do all it can to meet demand. That can be a challenge. Most of these big, big suppliers are always behind production. Some can be behind production three weeks or even a month. So even as a company, you go and place an order, pay physical cash, you have to wait three weeks or even a month before you get your product. And that is a gap that our customers might not even have the patience to wait. So what next for NYC Mall? As a company, the next thing or the next step that we want to take is to go into commercial procurement. So real estate developers, government agencies, big contractors, uh, we are looking forward to start doing business with you guys.
and that's very innovative. Well, a final one before we go, the International Labour Organization, in partnership with some other agencies, um, has organized a three-day fundraising workshop to equip partners on how to raise funds to sustain the operations of responsible and competitive enterprises. There's more in the following report. Sustaining Competitive and Responsible Enterprises SCORE is an international labor organization global program that seeks to improve productivity and working conditions in small and medium enterprises. The key intervention of the global program is a training intervention which combines practical classroom sessions with in-factory consulting. Speaking on the sidelines of the workshop, National Program Coordinator for SCORE, Samuel Esiedu, says the workshop is to help build capacities of investors to assess resources to support the training of SMEs. According to him, ILO will no longer fund the program because SCORE is at phase 3, which shows that the program is mature and will do fine when handed to new investors. Unfortunately, in Ghana, our interest in training is on the lower side. Many enterprises do not have budget for training. They don't even have it on their plans. But as SCORE, and good training, training that would improve upon the competitiveness, the productivity and quality of enterprises. The ILO still has projects in Ghana. As we speak, there is a project on child labor. We have a project on scale up, but projects run a phase. We have had the first phase, it started in 2011. So we have had the first phase, the second phase and the third phase. And you know, naturally there is take. But we have structures in place to sustain the implementation. Head of Research and Consultancy at the Chartered Institute of Bankers, Professor Samuel Lati, has advised businesses to pay keen attention to human resource as it is one of the key determinants of the success or failure of any business. I, I knew that my constituency will be expecting me to be talking about donor funding, donor funding, Ministry of So So and So, JICA, talk about USA. I know. But I just wanted to remind them that before we even get there, let's ask ourselves how are we doing ourselves with what we already have? Just a reminding session. So I was saying that we should look at our profit activities. We should look at our loss activities in the organization. And if it is too difficult to identify profit and loss activities, I just explained it by saying that whatever will feed your company is a profit activity. Feed it to feed you. Whatever will eat your company is a loss activity. Starve it and make work go. All right, and that's Business Live tonight. Thanks for watching. There's more news on our website, myjoyonline.com forward slash business. My name is Daryl Kwao. See you same time tomorrow.